Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to discuss a fairly controversial and important topic for quant finance, which is compensation. So for those of you that are actually subscribers and watch a lot of my content, you'll notice I don't typically wear my work attire, my suits, my ties, my dress shirts right for these videos, because I would like to keep these as casual and honest as possible. However, today's topic on compensation, I am wearing my typical work outfit minus my jacket just because I want to emphasize this topic and the fact that I have validity in speaking in this topic because I am a quant, I've worked at many banks consulting as well, and I get paid at many different companies, so I would have more of an inside track and knowledge than, for example, some grad student or some business person who has no clue because guess what? They've never been paid to be a quant. So let's dive right in. So first off, I'm gonna base this video on as much data as possible. So this is not my opinion, this is data I have found. I have tried to find sources that are good quality sources that are not opinionated. So the first myth in quant finance is we all make millions of dollars. And we all start out making like $150,000 and within like five years we're making a million dollars. Okay, this is complete bull, it is complete nonsense. Uh, I've seen people in other videos that I've commented on below in different comments, like fight with me and be like, hey, Dimitri, I'm getting an MBA and I'm gonna make a hundred and something coming out. So doing quant finance is very difficult and it's so hard to do that you're gonna easily make at least what an MBA would make. And the truth of that is, is MBAs have like a good old boys club and they're overpaid. This is my opinion. Um, I am quite against many business degrees. I have many friends that have MBAs that are very bright people and deserve to make what they make. However, that being said, as we're gonna allude to in the end of this video, your degree does not really determine how much you make in general. Your degree is only a small piece of what you make. So just pointing out in this on the MBA comparison, MBAs have a minimum of two years work experience at a good school. So I'm not talking some joke state college or like a community college and you went and got an MBA. I'm talking top rated, top 25 MBAs. You have to have two years at good schools and they have a lot of experience. So those aren't as comparable. And yes, it is true. Quants don't typically make as much as MBAs who go into consulting. Um, you have a lot more hours that you work. Uh, it's grueling work, it's not fun, and yes, they are paid more than quants, that's just sad reality. So let's dive into actually who makes all this money and where is this kind of like getting rich scheme coming from. So first off is Wall Street in the 80s, perhaps the 90s. Uh, there's all these movies like The Wolf on Wall Street, which I absolutely hate because it showcases one individual, uh, one special case, and doesn't really show Wall Street as an entire culture. So who's making this money and who's making the most of it? So I just pulled some people that I would consider quants or bankers and try to get their wealth and their annual salary. So the first person is Thomas Peterfree. Uh, he's the CEO of Interactive Broker. Uh, I'll put a link below to a video on him. The guy is amazing. He was using uh, technology to implement trading strategies and using like a robot he built that would manually put in all the tickers for him. And he did all these workarounds. Anyways, Interactive Broker is one of the best trading platforms for algorithmic trading, especially for those who are doing prop trading or doing it on, the, on their own. Um, so his ba educational background is engineering. His net wealth is $13.8 billion. No salary information was provided. Steve Cohen is, or was, or is the CEO of 0.72 Asset Management, uh, as well as SAC Capital Advisors. Very, very famous funds, somewhat controversial. Uh, his background, educational background is in economics, and he is worth $13 billion, and no salary information was provided. Lloyd Blankbein is CEO of Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, at least back in the day, was one of the most prestigious firms. It still holds somewhat a good weight in the industry today. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of Lloyd Blankbein. I think he is the best banking CEO out there. Uh, his wealth is 1.1 billion. Uh, his back educational background is history and law. His salary per year is 22.3 million. And then Jamie Dimon, who's comparable to Lloyd Blank Fine, his net worth is 1.1 billion as well. His annual salary is 28.2 million, and he has an MBA. 
And then the last person is David Shaw from D.E. Shaw. He is the founder of D.E. Shaw. Uh, it's a prestigious hedge fund. It makes a lot of money. Um, no net wealth on him. He has a computer science educational background and he makes 400 million per year. All this information comes from Wikipedia. You can look this up. Um, this is just what I'm showing you. So many people look at these individuals and they go, wow, right? Quants are making all this money. Well, first of all, if you look at the educational backgrounds of these people, I, a lot of these are quants in the sense of what a quant is. But again, like Jamie Dimon has an MBA. He's a business person. He is by no means a quant. But the one thing all these really, really wealthy people in finance or quant finance have in common, these are all the leading, like their founders, CEOs, the very, very highest position in these institutions. So yes, if you graduate with a financial engineering degree, financial mathematics, some type of quant degree, you become a founder, you are successful, or you become a CEO and you're successful, you will make a lot of money. It is possible. However, this is not the norm. This is not the average. There are not like 100,000 Lloyd Blank finds running around making you know millions of dollars a year. There's only a handful of these people. And this goes for trading as well. Yes, you can be a trader and make really good money. But the issue is, is being good at trading is not easy. There's only a handful of people that make millions of dollars because they're so good at trading. So from QuantNet's website, here is the data based on years on the salary median mean, bonus median, and bonus mean. You can see from these numbers that it kind of ballparks between like 60,000 and 95, and it goes all the way up to 70,000 for median salary in 2013. If you look at the means, it ranges anywhere from uh, basically 55, 56,000 a year, all up to 128,000 a year. So I'm not sure about you, but when people come out there and say like quants are making like millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, when you graduate, that's not what you're making. And it is possible to get there. But again, it's very rare as we pointed out with these executives and leaders and founders of these great funds. So next I went into QuantNet's top 10 programs based on the rankings for the latest year. I think it's like 2016, 2017 is what they have. And anyways, out of those 10, only four of them provide some information on their compensation. So yes, these programs are hiding what their students are making. So I think part of this is they don't wanna join in that competition of whose students make the most. I also think this is a attempt for many programs to kind of veil the fact that you're going to go and get a financial engineering degree. You're not going to come out making $150,000, $200,000 and be making, you know, seven figures within five years. It's just not going to happen. That's not reality. So the schools that do provide information is Columbia, their actual financial engineering program, not their deviant mathematical program. Uh, Carnegie Mellon University, Baruch, and UC Berkeley. So if you look at the average salary of these four schools, you'll see that the lowest is Columbia, and Columbia comes in basically at $93,000 for salary upon graduation. Um, yes, it is important to note they have sign-on bonuses of $17,000. Yes, they can get bonuses, but no, you're not pulling out a $100,000 bonus as many of these people on the internet. Or if you're looking to get into the degree, you're not going to pull a $100,000 bonus. It's just not likely unless you're in trading. If you are in trading, you have to be basically a junior quant or a junior trader for at least two years before you get going, before they even let you trade. So you're not going to be getting those salaries, those bonuses that you think you saw in those 1980s trading movies. It's just not going to happen. So the highest average salary is actually from Baruch. It's an amazing college. It's very cheap. However, it is very, very competitive to get into because it is such a good program. The average salary of a graduate from Baruch is 131. This is very, very good. This is very accurate. 131 is a very good salary, and most of these students are working in New York City where the cost of living is fairly high. However, 131 is great income. And then lastly, if you look at this next chart here, it gives you the high and low of compensation of Columbia, CMU, and Baruch. UC Berkeley did not provide this information, so we only have these three schools. Um, you can see here, though, that most of the lows are somewhere in the 60,000 range, maybe to 85,000 with Baruch, and they peak up at Baruch at 210 as the highest salary from this data. So all of this data is coming from their websites. I'm not going online looking at um, some other random opinionated website like rankings or anything. This is their website that they post on their information. I have used the most up-to-date salary information. And some of these are from like 2015, 2016, 2014. I don't know, somewhere in the last five years. 
But these are fairly accurate, guys. This is what the programs are reporting. This is what the students are reporting to the programs. So there's really no other way that we could get this information without asking the students themselves. And again, the programs are already doing that. So now I went on to LinkedIn, which now provides information for salaries. It's self-reported, so it is somewhat biased. So let's just dig in and see how much money different positions are making. So a risk officer in the US, um, here's the distribution. You'll see that the vast majority of them make between eighty-three dollars and $95,000. So a risk officer, which is what my title is, um, is a range. You could be anywhere from zero years of experience up to 10, 15 years of experience. Realistically, you're like an analyst. You're doing the grunt work, you're doing the quantitative methods, the statistical analysis of risk models. So you see here, yes, yeah, some people make up to 146 and some people make as low as 57. So this is in the United States, but again, the median salary is 92,000. The median bonus is 12,500. So yes, you're breaking 100,000, but this is experience. Like I said, it could be from anywhere from like zero to 10, zero to 15 years experience. So you're not gonna come out gradually making 146 and then somehow in five years, you know, be worth double this, triple this. It's not gonna happen. Yes, you can get like 20, 25% growth if you jump company to company, but there is some other limit based on your title and years of experience. The next position I looked at was quant analyst. These people typically work for like trading firms, hedge funds, different organizations that consider themselves a quant analyst. So again, most people in this make between 60 and 72,000. Uh, the bonus is about 20,000. The median salary is 100,000. So again, you're looking at 100 and something thousand with compensation and bonus. But again, these are people with multiple years of experience, not just graduates. Another popular position, as is seen in my video on six types of quants, is a quant researcher. And I'll put a link below to that video. But quant research analysts, they make anywhere from 66 to 180,000. Here's the distribution. You see there's a lot of people that make between like 66 and 112, and a good chunk of them make 157 to 180. The people on the top end are typically people with PhDs. They also have many years of experience because they're very, very good at what they do. They've proven that they're good, and so therefore they're gonna get paid more. But most people starting out are gonna be in that bucket of 66 to 89. And then we have quant developers, and again, a quick overview. Most people are making somewhere in the middle. So the median salary is 125,000, median bonus is 24,500. Pretty good job. Hard to get, but it pays well. Equity traders are coming in. The vast majority of them make between 79 and 104. The median salary is 100,000. The median bonus is 30,000. So again, please note here that the bonus range is from 12 to 241,000. So if you're an equity trader and you're very, very good at it, you could get a bonus of 241,000 and you might be raking in $250,000 for your salary. So you're the very, very best and you're making a half million dollars. Yes, they make really good money. Don't get me wrong. You can strive to do that. But again, these jobs are rare. They're hard to come by. And then on top of that, being really good at it is difficult. Trust me. I've been in this industry. I've tried to crack into trading. I know people that have actually done trading and prop trading. I've talked to them. They've given me their experiences. Yes, they know people that are making really, really good money. Um, they're not working that many hours because they trade in specific hours. And then once they hit their profit for the day, they exit. But again, this is very difficult, people. This is not like you just waltz out, get a financial engineering degree or some quant degree or like do artificial intelligence. And then you're like making all this money. Doesn't happen. It's not out there. Don't get me wrong. You could be a founder. You could create a fund. Um, you might be really smart. You might make it. You might make those millions of dollars. But again, it's not likely. And so kind of the conclusion of this entire video and just the wrap up is that yes, it is possible to make millions of dollars. Am I striving to make it? Yes, I am striving to make seven figures. However, there is a huge disclaimer on this, on being a quant and being an MBA. Both MBAs and most quants, especially the ones like at Baruch and these top programs that are making a lot of money, they've already worked in the industry for at least a few years. So I've seen quants that have had 10 years experience um, working in a company, working in a hedge fund, they went back and got a financial engineering degree and graduated. So like at Baruch, that one that's making 210,000 or whatever it was for the max, I'm sure they had at least at minimum two years of experience plus the degree. And the reality is they probably have like 10 years experience 
plus the degree, and then they're making over 200,000 coming out because they have the experience already. And that's what I would like to point out in this video is your compensation is not based on your degree solely. Your degree is one small piece of this entire equation. You need to have a really good degree, a really good experience, be really bright, and realistically to be a quant, you have to do that continual learning as I always point out. Being a quant is not having a degree. Making a lot of money is similar. To be worth a lot of money, to be a quant, you have to keep learning. You have to keep up with the trends. You have to work hard. You have to be very, very good at what you do. So I'm sure I'll see all kinds of comments below that people are like, oh, Dimitri, I know a guy. He's a partner at some consulting firm and he makes like, you know, over a million dollars. Okay, that's fine. The guy's in consulting. That's not quant. You're not a quant. You work for a consulting company. Yes, there are consulting companies that are quants, but again, you're probably a partner or a principal, or yes, they make a few hundred thousand, but they have an MBA. Um, they're part of a really good school. They have so much work experience. There's a lot of different factors that factor into how much money you're going to make. So my conclusion and overall statement is you will not make a million dollars upon graduation. I cannot make that any clearer. You will not do it. Um, but if you're looking to make really good money, so for example, making six figures is really good money for most people. Um, this is a great career for you, but you have to eat, sleep, and breathe quantitative finance, quantitative methods, statistics, mathematics, computer programming. These are all crucial things to being the best. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. If you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Post this on other sites if you like it. So post it on LinkedIn, post it on your Facebook, show your colleagues. Uh, if you don't like it, too bad. I feel bad that you don't like the video. You think that everyone's making millions of dollars but you're probably in college and haven't hit that reality point of how difficult it is to make money upon graduation. So anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.